，真係長談，深入時事話題。我哋今日嘅貴賓呢，係 B.C. 省官方反對黨新民主黨 N.D.P. 嘅黨領 Mr. John Hogan。Well, we're back, and、uh, I want to. Come up with some、uh, more serious political issues. Is、sure. that there was some very encouraging news coming from the federal、uh, the elections、mm -hmm. for NDP, but particularly from our neighbor Alberta. It's very good news for NDP. How does it affect your job and your work? And do you think that it, their success can be translated? To British Columbia, I think it can be. See, and and when I look at the polling numbers federally, very encouraging for Tom Mulcair right across the country. In Quebec, particularly, a very strong base of MPs in Quebec. Ontario is changing as well. The the Liberals are dropping, and the NDP is coming up. Those are encouraging things on the federal scene. But what encourages me the most is the change in government in Alberta. Forty-four、mm -hmm. years of conservative rule. And now we have Rachel Notley, the NDP premier of that province. Very positive for us here in BC, and I think it's largely because the conservative message during the campaign was the public was to blame for any shortcomings. Mr. Prentice famously said, "If you want to see what's wrong with Alberta, look in the mirror."、Mm -hmm. How, why a politician would say something like that is a mystery to me. But what Rachel Notley was able to do was be genuine. And to speak to the issues that were important to people in Alberta, cost of living issues, affordability, huge problems here in the Lower Mainland, housing particularly. So I'm going to focus on issues that are relevant to people. That's what Tom Mulcair has been doing. That's exactly what Rachel Notley did as well. If we have a message that resonates with、uh, the broader population, issues that are important to them, how do we make life more affordable? How do we make life better for British Columbians? I think we'll get a positive result. That's certainly what happened to Rachel and、uh, the people of Alberta. Actually, something is happening、uh, now here in British Columbia because the Insight West has a poll recently,、mm -hmm. and、uh, the approval rate for、uh, a premier is forty、uh, is thirty percent. But your approval rate as a, as an effective opposition leader was forty three percent. How you look at you? You're smiling so happy. <laughs> yeah, but the job. But the next election is still a long time. That's right. That's so right. how do you, what what is your plan to keep that momentum? I have to. It's important. I have to continue being out talking to people, meeting、mm -hmm. uh, new people in new areas,、uh, trying to grow. An understanding of who I am and what I represent. When we first met、uh, and first talked, you said, "Well, who are you?" And nobody knows who you are. And and I said, my biggest challenge was to get out among the people, not just on television, not just on the radio, but in community centers, in the hockey rink, at the theater,、uh, at awards,、uh, the Chamber of Commerce awards, where we were just a couple of weeks ago. Getting to know people, getting people to know me. I think、mm -hmm. that will build my support. And、uh, the premier's on her own. I, she's got, she can take care of herself.、Uh, her low approval rating was there before the election, and she overcame that. So, as you say, anything can happen in politics. I'm always encouraged to be on the top、uh, when polls come out. But at the end of the day, the only poll that matters is on election day. Everyone hears that so often, but it's very, very true. And、uh, there were people who didn't expect Rachel Notley to win, and she did.、Mm -hmm. People didn't expect Christy Clark to win, and she did. If I'm going to be successful, I'm going to work right up until five minutes past eight on election day, telling a positive story about how we can make life better for British Columbians. If I'm successful, we'll be having a different conversation at that time. If I'm unsuccessful, we'll see what goes on after that. The NDP has always been branded. As anti-commercial, anti-economic、mm -hmm. development,、uh, and more environmental,、uh, they and、uh, the more、uh, the union-oriented, and not very friendly with business. And、yeah. uh, for the next three years, what is your plan to manage this branding? Well, and you've you've nailed the issue for for me and for the NDP. Our opponents have been very effective at putting us in a box. A, a box that is oftentimes viewed as negative by many people in the community, but at the same time, we received 725,000 votes. 40% of the people who voted in the last election voted for the NDP. It wasn't a disastrous outcome. It just wasn't the positive outcome we all wanted.、Mm -hmm. I believe、uh, I'm a free market. 
person. I, I believe that these notions of left and right, and, and uh, they disappeared when the Berlin Wall fell. And when, when the Soviet Union failed, that was the end of this left-right dichotomy. And now we're looking to see how can we use the marketplace to better improve the lives of British Columbians. We are a trading province, a trading country. We have resources that the, pub, the, the, the broader international marketplace wants. Our challenge is to get those products to markets in a cost-effective way and create jobs in the process. What I think my success will be is that I can go into a lunchroom and talk to workers or a boardroom and talk to executives. And if I'm able to accomplish that, we'll be successful. One other thing that I believe will be different in the next election than was in the last one is the Green Party says no to everything regardless of the benefits. And the Liberals appear to be saying yes to everything regardless of the consequences. <laughs> that leaves a great divide where most British Columbians live. We want to see our economy grow, but we want to protect the blender of our natural environment. I mm -hmm. think New Democrats can balance that more effectively than the left and the right. And I'm a centrist. The center is there to be had. And that's where I plan to, to plant my flag going into the next election. Do you find there's enough room for you to maneuver between this, uh, the all yes and all no? I do. I do. Yeah. I believe that uh, I, as, a, as the energy spokesperson for the party for eight years, uh, I, I know a lot about resource econ economics. I know about marketplaces where we can sell our resources, where we have uh, strategic advantages and where we have liabilities. And I can have a constructive conversation in Prince George as well as in a, is in a tower here in Vancouver. And I think that's something that the Liberals are not able to do effectively and certainly not the Greens. So about the uh, coming election, it will be quite a few years from now. Yeah. 23 months. 23 months. Yeah. Oh, you're counting I already. I'm counting, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I can give you the days, but that's... <laughs> well, that, that, that's what a leader should do, yes. right? Yeah. But, but there is something happening much faster. Jenny Kwan uh, is leaving mm -hmm. the provincial arena. But that leaves, there will be a by-election uh, because it's too far from the next election. Yeah. Yeah. So in 2008, the BC NDP has set aside 25 ridings for female and minority candidates. Uh, would you continue that tradition? Yes, I would. And I believe that the reason we need to do that is that I want to be part of a political party that is reflected in the broader population. And we are, as we talked about earlier, a, a diverse multicultural community. We're going to have a difficult time replacing Jenny Kwan. She's 20 years in the job. She's well known uh, across BC. She tirelessly fought the government with just one friend, I Joy McGill. I always joke that there are politicians who are six, a fixed asset uh, of certain parties. Yes. You know, they've been there for Forever. Forever. Yeah. yeah. And I wish Jenny well in her, her career, future career at the federal level. But we've just nominated a woman, Melanie Mark, to replace Jenny. She's mm -hmm. a, a, a Nishka woman who grew up on the downtown east side. She, there has never been uh, a First Nations woman elected in British Columbia, and there's lots of First Nations women here. That's an opportunity to address the question of diversity. Mm -hmm. But now we no longer will have a Chinese Canadian in our caucus. We have a Filipino Canadian, we have a Korean Canadian, we have Indo Canadians, but we will no longer have a Chinese Canadian. That's a challenge for me over the next 23 months. And I'm going to be working with many Chinese Canadian supporters and party members to make sure that we're in the media regularly, but also that I am developing policies that resonate with Chinese Canadians. Mm -hmm. I have said uh, that I will have at least six Chinese Canadian candidates in the next election, and I'm going to hold fast to that. I want more, if at all possible. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that diversity that we put in place by policy is important for my party, and it's important for the people of British Columbia. If people don't see themselves reflected in their political institutions, they have less faith in those institutions. Trying to be the devil's advocate is that that kind of uh, the, a policy yep. could be seen deemed as an affirmative action, and that is not democracy either. You should let the people decide. But by kind of setting quotas, yep. is that 
uh, something that you are ready to defend? I am. I have defended it since 2008, and I'll defend yeah. it as leader as well. I think that we're talking now inside the party, and we're having a convention this fall, and it'll be a, a subject that we'll discuss. We do it at every convention. And I think if we can shape the policy so that people have a better understanding of this isn't saying no to one type of person or a, a male or a female. This is saying yes to trying to achieve some objectives. Forty percent of the people in our caucus are female. I mm -hmm. think we need to get to 50. I think we need to make sure that, as I say, that we have Vietnamese Canadians that represented in our caucus and on and on and on. Whatever diversity we see in our streets and in our towns, we should see in our legislature. I think that's an aspiration that most British Columbians will support. You're right, though. There are many who, uh, uh, if I go to a hockey rink and somebody comes up to me and says the NDP won't let me run for them, I say, mm -hmm. well, no, that's not true. You can run wherever you want to run, but you have to, you have to prove that you're a better candidate than a woman or, or an ethnic minority who has already put their, their name forward. Mm -hmm. But uh, best of luck to you, but uh, this is not going to work in, in these 25 constituencies or this, this percentage of seats. But we're always tweaking at BC, and, and there are challenges. You're, you're absolutely right, and, and I'm, but I'm, I'm prepared to defend them, and I have in the past, and I will in the future. Before we end our, our interview today, by the year, which thank you very much. It's we have a, a very pleasant. So let's go something on a lighter basis. One minute. Can you tell our audience who, not who the, the, the leader, uh, NDP is, but who John Hogan is? I was uh, raised on Southern Vancouver Island by a single mom. My dad died when I was a baby, and my sister, my older sister, and my mom raised me. I have uh, developed values of helping those who can't help themselves. My mom taught me that if you give respect, you get respect back. I believe that in politics, humility, uh, triumphs arrogance every day of the week. I think I have abilities that I want to offer to the people of BC, but I'm also conscious that I have shortcomings. And working with people, uh, telling their stories, I believe I can be an effective leader. That's the guy I am, and that's the guy, the premier I hope to be. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been yes. a pleasure. 我哋今日周一長談到呢處為止，我哋好高興請到我哋 B.C. 省官方反對黨新民主黨 N.D.P. 嘅黨領 Mr. John Hogan。我哋周一長談今日到此為止，我係立碧佳 B.C. Lee， 下次見。